Yes, so today I'm here with a very wonderful young football sensational talent um, in the person of Maoli Mensa Faje. Um, he's played in Spain and um, within less of two years, he's just blooming and becoming a star to look out for. So we're sitting with, with him today uh, to talk to him and then get to know more about this young star before uh, he becomes the mercy that you fail to check up on. Yeah. So I'm here with Mali Mensa Vajay. Yeah. yeah, that's the last name, Vajay. Yeah, that's my last what name. I, what does it mean? Uh, so it's an airway sign name, mm -hmm. which means that to show up, you know, go out there, do your thing. So that's how I, and, I and, and you're walking the name yeah. already. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing that with God's grace. So, yeah. Tell me how you got into Spain and already in the limelight. I've seen, we've seen videos even on YouTube. And there have been so many links, rumors about you joining big clubs in La Liga. But mm -hmm. how did it all start for you? How did it get there from Ghana? How was it like? Yeah, I mean, it was it was a long story, if I should say, because uh, started my football career way back in my in my hometown, Volta region. Okay. And then uh, I moved to Accra, and mm -hmm. then I was playing with shooting stars for yeah for about two years. Mm -hmm. Then that was how everything started. In your hometown? Yeah, yeah, my my hometown. We were. You know, we, we used to like play games, train, but not like, you know, because back then we were all young. So then we were just having fun with the, you know, with the game, mm. you know, with the, On the streets. Yeah, yeah. Just play. Was it grass or was it just. Uh, you know how our football feels. <laughs> which which like, town you know? was that? Which, which was the name of it? And uh, Tefle. Tefle, okay. Yeah, so on the whole. Yeah, yeah, on the, yeah. Wow. The, you wow. know, the, the, the bridge, you know. Mm, yeah. yeah. That's uh, that's where I'm from. Wow. Yeah. And, and how did you get that move? from Tefle Township all the way to Accra to play with students, student stars? So it was, um, it, was a, it was a trial that came up, uh, which was set up by the people that are holding the shooting stars. Mm. But then before, it was, um, it was a, a football group that they had in, uh, in Accra, and then they were making a football trial okay. in Accra. That was in 2015. Mm. So my, my coach, obviously, he's always on the, on the TV watching stuff, news and all that. So he, he saw that and he was like, yo, we have something there. Are some people that are really serious in doing football trials and all that all over Ghana. So my our coach, you know, he called us one thing. He was like, yo, we should do something, you know. And then, um, and then he told us and, and then it was left to us to decide, okay, then we have to go. But then I would say there was, there was no money because then we had to pay mm. for certain things yeah. to come to our craft for the trials and all that. So we had to reach out for same people, especially I have my, my uncle, which lives in Accra. And then uh, we had to reach out to him and all that. And then same people that contributed for the transportation and then, you know, for the money and all that. And then we came, luckily enough, we, we got selected, me and my brother. Okay. There were so many people. I mean, uh, I was so young and then I was playing, having trial with people that are 25, you know, and then... He, you could, you could imagine a young guy just coming in with a lot of people yeah. that are, you know. So, and then we were just doing it, working hard, doing our thing, enjoying the game, mm. not thinking anything. And then, yeah, we got to learn. And then that was how come everything started from Holy yeah. FC in mm. uh, okay. Holy yeah, FC in Chester. Okay. Uh, you spoke about your brother. Yeah. Your elder brother or? Mm, yeah, yeah, my elder brother. Where is he? Where is he now? Is he playing football still? Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's playing football still. He's, he's in Ghana? Yeah, no, no, he's not in Ghana. He's two years older than me. He's in uh, Serbia now. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Now let's talk about the transition coming to mm -hmm. shooting stars. Mm -hmm. uh, how easy was it for you to gel and quickly adapt to the system in there and then get the shoot up out of the country? I mean, with, with shooting stars, for me, it was like we, you know, I, I was just focusing on my talent because there was nothing like, you know, tactical play you know, there was nothing like that i was just focusing on the talent i had i was just using it enjoying the game i mean i knew i was young but then i was playing with much older guys but then i was just enjoying the game mm. play working hard listening to people behind the scenes that yo, you know you've got the talents so you just push it and then and so that was how some it. some talents are inherited some are inborn you know mm -hmm. that did your parents or your grandfather anybody play football to the highest level professional uh, professionally, no, but then uh, my dad uh, my dad used to say some funny story. Oh, I used to play football, but mm. then my dad didn't <laughs> allow me. So, okay. And then, yeah, I mean, we, we are the family of football. So my, my uncle also was a good footballer. They always okay. say that to us. So. But then none of my family members ever reached that, the top level. So You are setting the pace. Yeah, yeah by grace. Is, does that come with some pressure that, okay, well, I have to put the family name out there. 
at the professional level in terms of football? No, nah, it's actually motivating me. Okay. It's not putting pressure on me mm. because uh, things like that should motivate me, you know, mm. because when you look behind and then you realize, okay, you're out there. So you have the chance to just let that motivate you. And then, yeah, but no pressure. Wow. Now you had your time in Ghana. You enjoyed football with shooting stars mm -hmm. and you got a breakthrough to leave Ghana. Mm -hmm. Last season, let's say the just ended season, mm -hmm. you played with um, a division, second division mm -hmm. team in Spain. Mm -hmm. And for me, I felt uh, Ant Antaquera. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you, exactly. you, 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 you blew out in terms of your position in a team, 31 appearances mm -hmm. for you. And that is a lot of games mm -hmm. for a youngster to play mm -hmm. in, in a second division. Yeah. How do you describe the season yourself? How do you describe it? I wasn't an, it wasn't an easy season mm. for me, I would say, because uh, imagine a young, a young talent player coming up from an African continent, you, yeah. you, could, you could tell. So it was for me, the first season, I, I had to find my way to adjust into the system, but then you, obviously that's going to take time. So yeah, and then I, I was I had people around that I had to talk to, you know, get advices from, you know, because obviously I had no idea about how the European system works, mm. which we all know that is way different from how our football system is in Africa and in Ghana as well. So I, I mean, my my first season was pretty difficult for me, not that difficult because you know then I had to get used to the system, the Spanish culture, and then the language. The language. And how, how long did it take you to learn the Spanish language? I'll say yeah, six months to get fluent. You got a, you got a teacher or you? A, a I used in a to. I, I I used to. I I I I used to um to have a, a Spanish teacher, but then because my training my training times were not allow me to get really into the Spanish uh, lessons. So mm. you know, and then I moved, and then I was I was like, okay, I I need to find my way to learn Spanish. So I I, I learned by listening. You know, my friends always. Sometimes, you know, you go out with them, it's really boring, but then you had to, because sometimes I go out with them and then they try to communicate, say something to you, and then you'll mm. be looking into their face <laughs> and you feel like you are useless, you know? Yeah. But then they also want you to get into the, 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 the group. So, mm. yeah, I was doing that, going out with them, listening, and then uh, I could speak if now. If the coaches are giving out instructions and mm -hmm. they speak Spanish, obviously, mm -hmm. if yeah. you are not getting it mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. How frustrating is it and how is their reaction towards you? Yeah, for me, it never bothered me because uh, I, I always say this to myself. If I cannot listen, mm. I have eyes. So then okay. yeah, I, I have to, you know, I have to just be very focused. So when they, they are demonstrating something, maybe on the field drills like that, and then they probably explain in uh, Spanish. So then I have to be like, yo, listen very carefully and then watch. So mm. they explain, I, they, do you understand? I say, okay, no problem. And then I watch. So I make sure I don't be in the first line. <laughs> okay. I always have to go behind and yeah. then watch Observe. like two, three times. Mm -hmm. And then, then I get it immediately and then I pick it up, you know. So it, 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 that just kept my focus really high. Mm. Yeah. It looks like your, your intelligence actually propelled you to, to acquire a lot of things, including the language and even mm -hmm. observing things and practicing them and all that. But mm -hmm. let's talk about how you're able to catch a lot of attention mm -hmm. just in the season in, in the second division. There were links and rumor about you being linked to Barcelona, Xavi interested. Did you see those 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 those, those yeah. links? And those yeah, products? I saw. I saw a couple of them. People were telling me. I, I mean, obviously, friends were sending stuff like that to me. And then, uh, I mean, as much that was giving me an attention, mm -hmm. it was making me work harder as well. Because then a lot of people were coming to my profile, and then they'd be like, "Who is that guy that is getting all the names?" And then. So for me, then it was making me work more, more and more because then you wouldn't want to be that guy and then be like, but why is he getting attention? He's not a good player. So, you know, <laughs> then it was making me work more, more and more, you know, mm. but yeah, you know, it felt good because if things like that are coming for me, then that means you're doing something good. Now, playing actively and then getting links mm -hmm. comes with a lot of pressure, like you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Now, when the season was coming to an end, a lot of people will be like, okay, well, the transfer season is coming and all of that. Mm -hmm. Did you see yourself still playing uh, in the second division or you were just hoping that whatever happens should happen? Yeah, like I always say, I, I, I you know, it's just because if you're with the team, you, you always think, let me enjoy this moment with the team. And mm -hmm. then you just expect what is going to happen for you. And then as much as like I'm a strong believer of God, so I always be like, okay, let what God wants for me happens, you know. 
So on the moment, I just feel like, let me enjoy the moment with the team and then we'll see what's going to happen. Yeah. You just signed for a La Liga team, yeah. Real Betis. Mm -hmm. Now, when you got the link or you got the contact or your agent told you that, well, this is the offer that has come. Mm -hmm. To be honest, yeah. how was the reaction? How was the feeling like? <laughs> I mean, it was a nice feeling because I'm not going to lie. It was because Robert is like uh, one of the biggest clubs in the, in the Spanish league. So, you know, when I heard that, obviously there were rumors coming in, but then I was just out of it. But then when I heard, I, I felt happy and I wasn't surprised because I knew that, okay, this is something you've worked for, you've been working for. So when that came, I was like, okay, let me just embrace it, you know. But it wasn't a surprise for me. Mm. I was happy because it was a, I mean, a good club. And uh, to develop, I feel it was a good, you know, the page to develop myself. So I was happy, yeah. Now, this means that this is the first time you're playing in the La Liga. Yeah, hopefully. And, and, and there have been other Ghanaians that have played in the La Liga before. Mm -hmm. You have any idols or people you like to emulate or you want to just set a new record and a new name for yourself? <laughs> a new name or record nah i'm not really on the record thing you know i just i mean i've, I've got a couple players that i really like i like to watch thomas party for example okay he's a really good guy i love to watch him you know because when when you are in a in a, in a, in a system and then you, you know there are people that are that have been out there mm. you just look up to them so yeah, for me I, i'm not like on that to set a record or so now nah, i just enjoy my game and then you know do my thing yeah, and then we'll see what's happening with this rise of yours um, entering into Spanish football and obviously climbing the ladder, mm -hmm. do you think it's going to be drawing a lot of attention to people looking out for talent from Ghana? Yeah, obviously that will. I think that will do it. I mean, the way people are there that say are there, you know, the, the, the way, you know, they pave the way for, you know, a lot of Ghanaian players. And for me, getting those kind of attention now in the Spanish league, I feel that, I mean, because you know, people will be like, which country are you from in, say, Ghana? And then, of course, then they've got a lot of quality players like this in Ghana, so, which is obvious that people will think that way. Mm. Yeah. What should we be expecting or looking forward to Maoli doing in the La Liga in the season coming? Enjoy football. Well, enjoy uh, football. I think that's the only people thing. enjoy football in yeah. diverse, various ways. Some people want to see the dribbling, mm -hmm. some want to see players running Mbappe style running with the ball and getting the goals I think he scored two goals last yeah. season yeah last season I got from midfield yeah yeah mm. so what do you want to be adding to your game more to make you a better player goals yeah exactly. I, yeah I want to get more bangers in the game because pe people like people always see me like that because I know I've, I've got like like a lot of goals that are almost the same you know mm. I like no, I don't get, I don't normally get goals from the box, you know, mm. because sometimes I also look at my video, how do you get all those goals? You know, yeah. you know, people ask me all those questions, like, how do you get, you know, almost the same goals. And I've got those couple goals out there in the Spanish league and then people are always talking, you always get those. Goals. So, yeah. so now that I, I think I'm in the, in the bigger stage, yeah, let's, let's watch out for that. So, more. so you should be emulating the likes of Frank Lampard who have been the highest scoring midfielders, uh, or you want to do who is your well, idol when it comes to international football? Who, who, do, you, who do you admire the most? Who do you? you know, I, for me, I, I look up for like top quality players that I think my football style matches with them. Okay, like? Uh, it, most people say my kind of place like N'Golo Kante because I always, you know, have that mentality. Like, let me fight for the ball and all that. But then I also feel like, I've, yeah, he's a top quality player. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I've got a bit of him. Mm. And then I have different things that I, I also focus on, especially okay. with the ball. Mm. Yeah, not off the ball as well. Cause I, but then I, I just look out for top quality players. Frankie De Jong, Thiago Alcantara. Yeah, I would just top players a lot. And then obviously Thomas Partey, which I like a lot. Yeah, the yeah. passing. Yeah, the passing, the intelligence and yeah. everything. Yeah. To, to get that level of N'Golo Kante requirement mm. of energy. Yeah, that's and you've exhibited it already in, in, mm. in, in your game so far. But what really ignites that intensity in your energy level and the passion at all times? Yeah, I, I think um, I, I think for me is is everything goes with, you know, how you think, you know, the mentality, how you take it in, you know, because uh, that energy of N'Golo Kante is like exceptional. Mm. And then for you to get to that level, you need to put a lot of work in. 
So for me, I, I just, I mean, you cannot be him, just be yourself. So you just need to be mentally strong, you know, to put that kind of energy in the game, you know, because obviously it's a team, but then individually you need to add something to the team, you know. Mm. So I always go with my mentality, you know, just to put that kind of energy in the game. I'm going to hold you to scoring more goals next season because that is a target for, for yeah, you. So yeah. the next time we're meeting you, we're going to be counting the number of goals okay. you scored and who you're surpassing mm -hmm. at the highest level. Mm -hmm. Now let's get back to your formative years mm -hmm. because obviously now that you are at that level in playing in La Liga, where you came from, the people, they will be proud, especially shooting stars. They are youngsters who are also grooming up mm -hmm. to, to get to your level and will be seeing you as an idol at the moment. Mm -hmm. What words do you have for them? Yeah, just listen to the people that 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 stood behind you, you know, listen to them and then obviously work hard. And mm -hmm. then let things around you motivate you. I, I think that's uh, that's that's what I believe in. Okay. Yeah, people around me that helped me. I, I always, you know, look out to them and then just use what around you, you personally motivate you and then just enjoy the game. They'll be asking questions. How did Maoli make it from shooting stars? What what did the trick for him? What should we also do similar? Those are the questions that will be on their mind. Those mm -hmm. young boys mm -hmm. are shooting stars at the moment. They'll be asking all these questions. How did Mali do it? What did he do when he was here? I, I think uh, it was it was the component part of uh, when we were shooting stars because obviously there are things that will be happening in you know we all know Ghana how it works with the teams. So you know when you get things like that, you, you just have to, call. I think, because for me, I always believe like, I think what we, we went through in shooting stars, that is what is shaping our life out there in Europe, because, you know, we go through stuff like that, but then you have to be like, yo, I've been through this, you don't want to come back and face that again, so <laughs> that's shaping your life, you know, yeah. because most people, I, obviously, I got friends out there, they ask me, how do you, how do you feel living all alone, mm. leaving your family and then your friends all over? in Africa and coming to Spain and then you can comport yourself like mentally everything and then for, then I always think back and then I smile because I know what I've been through back yeah. there so I, I just feel that's composing my life and then still on your formative years with shooting stars I'm sure it, it wasn't just a walk in the park there was a lot of exposure mm -hmm. and a lot of intensity mm -hmm. in terms of how you were groomed mm -hmm. from the grassroots level with mm -hmm. shooting stars share with us how the process was like so basically we should in stars uh, it was a whole like a lot of work that we've put in especially for me mm. especially I, I got i got the chance to train with like top coaches especially i was uh, with uh, lizzie's complex which obviously uh, yeah. marcel they say owns that so i was there and then uh, i got the opportunity to get used to the european system because I've got coaches on there, Coach Nana, Coach Prince, yeah. which were very, very, very good coaches. They were bringing the European stuff to for us when mm. we were there. And then that helped me a lot because uh, there it was things like European stuff were taught over there and then it was helping me to get my, my quality start from there. Obviously, we know we know how Ghana football is. So if you, if you get the chance to get those kind of training, mm. which is going to help your quality, so I think that helped me a lot. And then uh, with, the sh with shooting stars, so me moving from leases to shooting stars, what, what helped me the most was uh, being tough, being tough with shooting stars because then I, I got the chance to play with a lot of players that are way older than me. Mm. And then it was making me much stronger, stronger, stronger. And then um, the, the, the whole preparation with shooting stars was... Uh, I think it was it was very very important for us. How about the trial opportunities? I'm sure you had a lot of trial opportunities outside of Ghana mm -hmm. through the, the through the shooting stars um, mm -hmm. project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we we, go, we 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 they made a, a group a great team group that uh, we we traveled uh, uh, to um, to London to play against Sheffield United, mm. which was a very good one for us. Wow. Yeah, and then we we got prepared really well. Mm. You know, we, we, you know, they, because our coaches from shooting stars, uh, yeah, some of them are our Preco, for example, mm. which is a national coach. We, we had him also. And then uh, we got coaches from uh, Netherlands, Rene, they, which they also came. They dropped down, helping us, you know, with a lot of stuff to get used to the European system. That must be some tough investment from shooting yeah, stars. It was, it was really, it was, uh, it was top one because everyone was on us you know because they were they, they are putting in so much energy so mm. then we have to accept that energy and then we we put all the the hard work in mm. you know so aside uk sheffield united did you have any other 
teams in Europe that you guys got? Um, yeah, I, I mean, so some of the players got the chance to to train with other clubs. For me, example, I, I got uh, the chance when I moved to Spain. I got the chance to train with uh, Malaga. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, I, I was there for for a couple of weeks, and then um, uh, moved to Granada as well. Wow. I was there for a couple of weeks, and then uh, a couple of clubs in Spain, which I think helped me a lot because uh, to be able to get exposed to that kind of environment helps a lot. Hmm. Because uh, you cannot just get out from Ghana and then go into the system, then you expect to be at the top. Hmm. Because you can be the best player in Ghana, but then when you get there, then you realize, no, this, this, you know, there, there are players that you know you have to match up with. Hmm. So I think that helped me a lot with uh, getting exposed to these clubs. Helped me a lot with uh, what I'm doing today. It means that all the young ones who are shooting stars at the moment mm -hmm. should just be open-minded about all the opportunities and the exposures that their, their management mm -hmm. brings to them because when they grab it well then they should yeah, yeah. to their level yeah because uh, they they bring so much good energy into the team mm. and then a lot of chances so when that comes in then you need to accept it okay you need to take it in mm. because uh, i think shooting stars is doing a great job you know because you know obviously teams in ghana don't get chances like that to get, get exposed to coaches you know the national coaches and the coaches from from Europe and all that, come down here and just to develop the players, mm. you know. So when you know you find yourself in a team which is doing all that for you, then you should know, yeah, they are putting energy. So you need to give your all as well. So you you mentioned training in Malaga. Um, you also train uh, with other teams in Spain, in Europe, England, and all of that. And and you also played some youth tournaments where you won best player among the European yeah. in your in your youth your co co equals. I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was uh, like 20, 20, 2017, I think. We, we went with the Marcel Desai uh, program uh, in Sweden. Okay, and the Gothia uh, Cup. Yeah, the Gothia Cup, which is one of the biggest tournament, yes. yeah, youth yes. tournament, I think, in the world because you've got players like Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Yeah. That, yeah, they also play all those kind of league. And then uh, we, we won the league. Uh, we, we won our, our age group. And then mm. I was, uh, I scored some beautiful goals. So I like, like my bangers, I was saying. Mm. Yeah, and then I got uh, the best player of the tournament um, in Sweden. Mm. And then uh, after that, we moved to Paris as well. But how was it feeling like get agents and football scouts around such a competition? Because it's a global competition mm -hmm. in the summer where people look to see young talents. Mm -hmm. And winning the best player of such a competition, mm -hmm. how was it feeling like? Feeling pumped was like, well, this is my time I, to, I, to I, win. I felt great, honestly, because... Uh, you know, because when, when you see like millions of people, because uh, obviously we're at the opening ceremony, we see millions of people yeah. and then you get chosen to like the best player of the tournament. That's incredible. So yeah. for me, I think I cried that day, I think, yeah, because <laughs> I, I, I felt like emotional and it was, and then I wasn't expecting that it was uh, one of our coaches that told me after the, the finals and then they told me, oh, you're going to be caught up there. So I said, why, why? And then they say you won the best player. I was like, oh, really? Wow. Yeah, that, that was really but after, good. after that competition, did you stay around in, in Holland, Sweden? To and then after Sweden, we, we moved uh, from Sweden to, to Paris. Okay. Yeah, we, we had a tournament over there as well, uh, Paris World Games, mm. which was a very huge tournament as well. Okay. Then I played, scored a couple goals, but finally not the best player over there. But I had, I had a good time over mm. there as but well. Did you start playing football as a midfielder or you migrated from different positions? Way back, I, I I used to play right back. <laughs> right, back. but yeah, that I was like five years, six years there. But I used to play right back, and then um, I think after I got, I moved into midfield, and then that was then. Mm -hmm. And then I used to I used to strike sometimes because I got my brother, which is very good at striking. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we we used to play in our team back in uh, in my hometown, the Tefle. We you know, and then my brother switches. Sometimes he you know he's at the top and he's not making goals. I, I'd be like, bro, come back, you know, play the midfield. <laughs> and then I go up there and then we see and I get the goal. So it was midfield. It was mm. right back midfield and then striking. But then I realized you know, I was more like a midfield player. You, you didn't think of becoming the number 10, like more like a, a auxiliary striker, midfield sort of a player? No, nah, I, 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 because I, I think I realized myself that I'm more useful when I'm playing eight because then I know I have a quality of attacking, of getting goals, and then I have the quality of defending as well. Mm. So I always be like, okay, well, let me do the two. Because when you play at six, some, mm. some, most of the teams, when you play at six, and then they make you, okay, you need to stand as a people. Yeah, yeah, so you don't need to go, yeah. yeah. And then when you play as 10, obviously, then you coming back, then I feel like, okay, 
I have the quality of defending, so why play 10 and then stay up there and then I lose that quality of defending? So be in the middle, they choose so I can do both. So, and then, uh, yeah, it was good. Mm. You, you, you've been really groomed mm -hmm. from youth level, grassroots level, and yeah. your, your, the, 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 the channel through which you've gone through mm -hmm. looks like has really shaped you into what you are today. Yeah. And, and all that goes to probably maybe the people you met or your, your self-discipline or it's a whole lot of package. No, I'm, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it was all by me because it, it was, it was, a, it was a stage given to me mm. by the people around me. Okay. And then I grabbed it because uh, we, we had a tournament as well in Dubai, wow. which was one of the biggest tournaments I would say mm. I've been to because uh, then uh, we got like all the La Liga club, I mean, biggest club in the world, Barcelona was there. And then now uh, we got chances to play with, uh, obviously, the young kid that is, uh, you know, making the way, mm. uh, Xavi Simons. He was at the tournament as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so we got the chance to, you know, those tournaments as well. So all those things. I mean, I would say we were given the, the exposure and then I yeah, grabbed it. In 2019, you got the opportunity to train with the national under-20 team. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you didn't play for the team no. because you had a trial opportunity mm -hmm. uh, in, in London. Yeah. And, and that means that you missed out on the national team call-up. Mm -hmm. But then, now that you're growing into limelight, obviously, there should be more calls from that. Should we be expecting some national team appearances from you? Maybe the Black Stars. <laughs> I hope so. Of course, obviously, every every Ghanaian young talent out there wish to play for his his country. That means where he's from originally. Every Ghanaian talent wants to to be seen on that on that page because you you feel good with that mm. with that with that the exposure as well. So for me, I I just keep doing my thing, keep working at obviously because that's what is going to get the attention for them to invite you. And then yeah, let's hope. For me, I'm, I'll be happy if I get the chance. So I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Take you play, it alongside, well. play alongside Thomas Pate. Yeah, or so your, someone uh, I used to watch a lot. So that would be nice. So let's see, I hope. But then uh, it only needs the hard work, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. to get that. Sure. Wish yeah. all the best. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you.